here we are in a little shrine to my beloved group of seven. Uh, I've got A.Y. Jackson on one side and uh, J.E.H. MacDonald behind me here. Um, the fascinating thing is that these two paintings apparently were inspired by the same landscape. The two artists were working a few hundred yards apart on the same ridge in Algoma. They were of course working on sketches because you can't paint something this size sitting on the top of a ridge in Algoma, but their sketches were then worked up at the studio back home uh, into these paintings. Now, if they were painting at the same time on the same ridge, the results should surely be very similar. And in some ways they are. They're both up high looking down over a panorama uh, across a landscape. But the tone is very, very different. And that's the conversation here. Because what MacDonald made of his sketch is serene and beautiful. It's late autumn. It has all of that tapestry of colors of late autumn. It's a profoundly beautiful work. Jackson, however, made something very different from his sketch. And we know from uh, a conversation that he had with his niece, Naomi, that the sketch for this painting did not contain much of the detail that makes it so notable now. It did not have the dark trees, the burnt trees in the foreground, nor did it have the first flurries of snow. This painting is now called First Snow, Algoma. He added those to the final painting. The result, therefore, has a story implied behind it. MacDonald was just happy basking in those colors. Jackson imposes a narrative. And if you look at this painting, if you look at those dead trees, if you look at the flurries of snow like smoke or ash rising, it's worthwhile remembering the date. This is 1919. A.Y. Jackson had just been demobbed. He was the only member of the group of seven who fought, actually fought in the trenches of the First World War, was injured in the trenches of the First World War. But he also exhibited in a great exhibition in 1919 in London at the Royal Academy, which looked at the works of those artists who had worked as war artists during the First World War. And he had had some 50 odd paintings in that show. And alongside great British artists like, obviously, Paul Nash. And Paul Nash had created images of the trenches, of the battlefields of the Somme, that are burned in everyone's um, mind to this day, featuring the ruined landscape, the burnt, shattered trees in the foreground, this impaled itself in people's imaginations at the time. And it's impossible not to imagine that Jackson, while looking at this wonderful serene landscape, also has at the back of his mind the horrors of the First World War.